For more on the summit, I spoke to you, Kenneth Yellowitz. He's a former U.S. ambassador to Belarus and Georgia and a fellow with the Woodrow Wilson Center, a Washington think tank that focuses on global issues. And I asked him if he was optimistic leaders could put aside tensions with Russia to focus on the climate. Yes, I'm cautiously optimistic. Uh, I'm aware of the tensions. Um, uh, the Arctic Council was created in 1996, and it has worked very successfully on issues like uh, the environment, uh, economic development in a sustainable way, and they've put politics uh, off to the side. The issues in the Arctic remain overarching. Uh, climate change, the state of the Arctic Ocean, uh, oil spills, search and rescue. It's beyond any one country to deal with those things, so it's imperative that the cooperation go on. And we've just written a report, a group of, uh, of you know, international experts, and our conclusion was that it's really important for the uh, cooperation in the Arctic to continue and that this should be one of the major goals of the United States chairmanship. But obviously, a lot is also going to depend on the Russians. Well, that being said, are you surprised that Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov will not attend the meeting? And, and what do you make about Russia's war games in the Arctic region recently? I'm disappointed. Um, this would have been an opportunity, I think, for the minister to sit down uh, with not only with Secretary Kerry, but all the other Arctic foreign ministers and to demonstrate, you know, that Russia, you know, really does have an interest in peaceful uh, cooperation. Uh, they're going to be represented by a high-ranking minister, but not the foreign minister. So I'm disappointed. Um, I think that, uh, you know, the war games, as I said, there, there's been an awful lot of publicity given to this. So far, and I emphasize so far, uh, from my speaking with a number of military colleagues, it's viewed more as a demonstration of resolve to defend. Uh, you know, Russia has major interest in the north. Our, our oil, gas, a lot of their territory is in the north. They're going to be new shipping routes there. And of course, they have very significant interest to defend and protect. So some of this uh, is logical and not to be, uh, you, know, uh, you know, unexpected. But the concern is that, you know, it not, you know, move forward and forward. As I say, so far, uh, it looks to be mostly defensive, uh, you know, on everybody's side, and that's the way we want to keep it. You've also said that the Arctic may be one of the few areas where constructive work with Russia can be done. Can you explain? Yeah, we're having, obviously, very serious problems with Russia right now on a whole series of issues. Um, there, are, I, I like to divide issues into three categories. One, in the first is one in which we simply disagree. We have dis major disagreements about Ukraine. Uh, we have some dis disagreements on other parts of the world. Uh, there are other areas where we are working together. For example, uh, on Iran, the negotiations on the nuclear issues, on anti-terrorism issues. We are still working, I think, reasonably effective, effectively. And then there's a third category where cooperation might still be possible. I put the Arctic into the third. It's an area where we have cooperated in the past, where, as I mentioned earlier, the overriding interests are very important for Russia, and they're beyond any one country, you know, to manage. And our hope is that, you know, those overriding interests combined with good diplomacy and political will on the part of all countries will keep us moving in that direction, you know, of constructive cooperation. So that's why I say that the Arctic, to me, you know, is one of the real possibilities where we can continue to cooperate. Right, Ambassador Kenneth Yellowitz, we appreciate your time. Thanks for being here. Thank you very much for having me.